we're back for probably one of the most probably I'm so excited to talk about this documentary me too I mean the second like while I was watching it I was like I cannot wait well we've been talking about it since we saw the previews oh my gosh yeah. I can't wait I'm so excited I think people are either gonna love it or hate it I'm pretty sure they're gonna love it <laughs> select few that are gonna hate it there's a few that are gonna hate it <laughs> <laughs> so how's your week been uh well crazy you know we got homecoming coming up and you know uh-huh. football Last games one. and mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. just nuts i hate football games i know i hate them so much i hated the one friday well i mean not because of the football game oh yes because yes because it was senior day and they or night okay so I do not feel like they gave us adequate instruction. So when we were walking Avery out onto the field, Mm -hmm. um, they were like, okay, stand right here. And then when they call your name, move forward. They didn't tell us how far to move forward. (laughs) And so Avery kept walking and I was like, oh my God, she's going to walk off the field. So I kind of pulled her back and she's like, what are you doing? And so we all look like we hate each other. (laughs) And are shoving each other around when we walk out. And then Eli she's like. doesn't know who to follow. Yeah, she's like, go to the number. And so we go to the number. And then all the other little cheerleaders, of course, we're first. So they see what we do. So they do it flawlessly. We look like idiots. <laughs> and then everybody hated each other when we got off. And I cried for about five minutes. Stop it. Yeah, I did. You cried? Well, not only that, but also when I got up, they moved the cheerleaders over near the band. Which the cheerleaders um, love, don't get me wrong, because they love dancing and hearing yeah. all the music. But we, Philip sat us behind the student section. Yeah. Well, the student section stands the whole time. Yeah, miserable. And so we could not see her at all. Yeah. And so I was like, well, it's senior night. Um, I just ruined my kid's senior walkout, and I can't see her. So I cried for about five minutes, and that was fine. And then did you stay there, or did you go over to by the band? Um, I kept leaving, because Philip refuses to move, because oh. he's Philip, and... Right. So I kept dragging my best friend and Avery's boyfriend down to go watch Avery, go and watch then her. I would go back up. Well, normally that's where I would be seated. Mm-hmm. Is that side? And you could have come sat with me. Well, good. Save me some seats husband. on homecoming. <laughs> um, except this week I was working the concession stand. Uh, oh my gosh! Was that horrible? It's so horrible, Misty. Have you never done it? No, they don't make us do it. We just pay all the money. Well, I'm gonna from now on just pay the well, money. First of all. Please, Lord, don't let this be a thing anymore. But I, I'm just not going to. I mean, we're just paying it outright next time. I mean, I'm chair booster president, so I already have to do a whole bunch of crap. They're not getting me in that uh, yeah. concession stand. Well, I mean, I don't know what is not appealing about smelling like a grease trap. Oh, delicious. And not sitting down for four hours and a constant float. Like, the line never, ever stops. No. Like, there's never a point where you say, oh, we've got a second before the next person comes up. It is an actual flow of people from the moment 6 o'clock starts uh-huh. to about two minutes before the game ends. And I'm not kidding, Am- Amaryllis. Like, it is just your luck. I've never seen that stadium packed out the way I saw it. <laughs> Are <laughs> Senior you serious? Night. I'm dead serious. We couldn't find a spot to sit down in. Are After we had already sat, because I was like, let's move, because well, I can't see her. And Philip's like, there's no seats. Yeah. I've never seen that stadium pack like that, ever. Well, I mean, I guess Helena Since Dabo is, came. Since Dabo came. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've got a story about Dabo. Do you? Do you have a minute? Sure. Okay, so um, many, many years ago, he used to go to the church that I used to go to. Uh-huh. And I didn't know him. Um, And then I also used to have, this was before he was coaching, and um, I also used to have a little retail store that I was moving. Mm -hmm. And so he was my leasing agent for this new store. He was the one that helped me negotiate the lease. And I said, blah, blah, blah. And um, one Monday afternoon, he called me on my phone and he said, and I just thought he was calling to ask me a question about the lease. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, Dabo, what's up? Um, What can I help you with? And he said, I'm, I'm not calling about the lease today. He said, I just, I heard you sing yesterday and I wanted to tell you that I really liked it. <sighs> so Amaryllis. <nice>. Nice. <laughs> he has no idea who I am now. I mean, that was a hundred years ago. But I just always, every time I ever see him, I think that was just such a nice gesture because he didn't know me. I mean, he just. Why did you have really to one up me on air? Stop. <laughs> And let everybody know that a famous person famous. said that you sing great, and I haven't had a famous person do that for he me. He wasn't famous at the time. 
He wasn't famous at the time. And also, I had to redeem myself because the last we talked, I smelled like a cheeseburger. Oh. So I had to kind of make people think, you know, I'm better than that. Right. I get you. Anyway. You smell like fries all weekend. It's fine. <laughs> I bet your husband was like, mm-mm, Amaryllis. Yum. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about Lula Rich. Lula Rich. Lula Rich. Okay, uh, Lula Rich is uh, on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Definitely okay for the kids, but they'll be bored silly. Is it a four-part? It's a four-part. It's a docuseries, but man, does it go fast. It goes real fast. Man, does it go fast. I, Rhett and I consumed it, like, in one sitting. I saw it, I, I saw it in one night. Yeah. yeah. We just, uh, in fact, I mean, we, I didn't intend that. It's just. I actually watched it twice. Because yes, me too. the first time <laughs> I watched it, I was just like, what the crap is happening? And then I was like, I got to watch it again because I didn't even like retain this information. I was just sitting there yeah. having a conversation back and forth with Philip. Like, what in the what world? What is happening? What would you do if I dot, dot, dot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what we're going to, I want to, we were talking about this before, and I just want to make very sure that we don't make generalizations about everybody that is in LuLaRoe or in any network marketing. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I get a check from a multi-level marketing company, but I have seen these behaviors. So I have this mixed bag of feelings Uh that I'll, and we'll talk about it. But I want to be very sure, because I don't want people to think that the people that are just, you know, giving it a go mm-hmm. are Mark and Deanne Stidham. I do not get a check from a multi-level marketing company, <laughs> but I have gotten them in the, I have gotten them in the past and I mean, enough to buy some Starbucks on the weekends, yeah. you yeah. know, nothing crazy, but. Right. You that's know. standard. That's like the normal. That's the normal. Yeah. So, I mean, I get it. I understand the draw and. Yeah. You know, for some people it works, and for some people it does not. Yeah, for most people it does not. For most people it does not. Yeah. Yeah. But in particular, what we want to talk about is these crazy people. Please tell me what you thought of Mark and Deanne Stidham. Stidham? 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 Um, I don't know. Mark and Deanne. I thought they were the Jim and Tammy Faye of network marketing. <laughs> For us, every time they came on the screen, it was just, the credibility just immediately went down. Like, where you might think, these are some lovely women, this company can be redeemed. Uh Uh-huh. The second they start talking, you just realize, these people are Please forgive me. I hope it was editing, but they do not seem very smart. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Deanne, for sure. I mean, like, they don't seem like they are knowledgeable yeah in any field of their own business well I just think they got in over their heads and they didn't know what to do yeah and and they the were way just they making it up was the wrong way as they went yes yeah and they unfortunately went the wrong way and the whole way that they're trying to encourage these women was way off the mark in my opinion oh yes yeah yeah uh, yes we'll get into that later yeah. So let me tell you something about my multi-level marketing experience, okay? okay? So I have three children, two of which have special needs, and so I always knew I needed to be at home in some capacity. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I did that by going to school, and I got my medical transcriptionist license, and I worked from home as a medical transcriptionist for many, many years. And a lot of people think, oh, that's so easy. You just sit there. It is grueling, hard painful work you are sitting at a desk you get paid um per line so how fast you type is how much money you make and you're not getting paid oh we get paid i mean you get paid like six cents a line right okay yeah and a line is 52 characters yeah that's like transcriptionists they make no money at right. all and it's hard work right and it's medical transcriptionists so i had to be at least 99 percent accurate or i got flagged and oh, yeah you're always scared you're going to lose your job, okay? So it was very stressful. It was very hard. I worked crazy hours because that's when I could do it because you have to have headphones in your ears, and when you're home with kids, you have to be able to hear your kids. Mm -hmm. So I worked before they woke up. I worked at nap time, and I worked when my husband got home from school, from work. And I did that for 10-plus years. Wow. Okay? And we needed it, and it helped with our income, and we were fine. But once we got to a place to where I didn't need as much income, Philip was making more money, 
Um, I started seeing these different multi-level marketing, especially once I got on Facebook and, you know, um, the whole social media thing took off. I started to see these women who were staying at home with their kids and they were making all this money and it was so fun. They were having these parties. And so I was like, I'm fun. People like me. Yeah. And it, it never failed. Whatever party I went to, every time the woman would be like, you would make so much money. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, I think a lot of myself. Correct. Correct. Yes. So Sorry. I'd be like, you're right. I can make a lot of money. People like me. Yeah. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it. People like me. Yeah. Okay. And so I did. I signed up for the first one was Mary Kay. Okay. Failed miserably. Okay. Okay. Terribly, terribly, terribly. And Mary Kay, now they wanted you to buy not only the starter kit, but they wanted you to buy some inventory. Right, okay. Right. And so I think I I did it with Philip a couple of times and he um, bought me this inventory. Okay. And I probably still got some of that inventory. Okay. <laughs> Well, we love Mary Kay makeup. We love Mary. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with Mary Kay makeup. Yeah. I just, I could not, I didn't you have. Sell it. Yeah. I couldn't sell it. I yeah. wasn't friends with the people that wanted it. Yeah. So then I started selling um, Jamberry, Jamberry okay. nails. I used to love Jamberry nails. Girl, I still love Jamberry nails. And I did pretty good at Jamberry nails. Oh, yeah? I had a team under me oh. and we sold. And I think. One time I got like an $800 check. Oh, nice. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is fabulous. Da, da, da. But the thing with Jamberry, which differs from LuLaRoe, is you had to keep up your own personal sales, which I think is fair. Yeah. You had to keep up your own personal sales in order for you to get paid for what your team made. Right. And to make those personal sales, buddy, you had to throw parties. Yeah. And I got sick of throwing parties. Yeah. And I got sick of being away from my kids on the weekends. Yeah. And... I just got tired of it. And so I let it go. And I'm sure there's still people that do Jamberry. I know they had a little financial issue at one point. I don't know. I read something. But then anyway. Now there's that Color Street that people love. Color too. Street, love yeah. it. But I've still got 45,000 Jamberries. Anybody wants to come to my house, we will have a party. I have tons of Jamberry. I, I lo- love them. I love them. I haven't used them in forever, but I do love them. Um, I did Young Living mm-hmm. for about three and a half seconds. Okay. <laughs> I bought the um, starter kit. Honestly, I just bought the starter kit because somebody was like, oh, this will cure your kid's autism. And I was oh. like, oh, great. <laughs> and that was back when I thought oh like, gosh. I thought like, oh, if I'll do all these things, it'll be better and bu- whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, P.S. It doesn't cure autism. What? But uh, yeah. And if you're trying to cure it, you're on a dead end road. Anyway. <laughs> Do not send your emails to Amaryllis Barnett <laughs> at gmail.com. Anyway, it's not right <laughs> anyway, it's <laughs> not a good address. Anyway, I did, I got uh, the Young Living oils. I still use them, I love them. I love the way they smell. They do help me with certain things like headaches and nausea and things. Unfortunately, um, they do not cure autism. They do not cure autism, but I did. I loved them and, yeah. and I still use them. And I tried to, to do that little business for a little bit, but it's an expensive startup kit. And so I found it really a saturated market. There were a lot of, it was the huge oil boom. There were a lot of people doing it, a lot of people making a lot of money. And I got in real low, so I didn't make nothing. I think I lost money. Oh, yeah. that's too bad. Um, but other than that, then once that happened, Philip was like, mm, you're done. We're done here you're done with this and so then I said well then I'm just going to be a kept woman and I'll substitute when I feel like it okay but I also seem to remember that you sold um unique (gasps) oh crap (laughs) unique was one of my best things how did I forget that I did I sold unique and I did really good at unique you were so good at it I was really good at it I'm still good at it um (laughs) I would do makeup videos, yes. and people love those makeup videos. That's when I videos. first met you. Was it really? Yeah. You know, people still come up to me and go, oh, I lived for those makeup videos. They were so fun. I need to just do them with what I use now, like yeah. from Walmart. But <laughs> anyway, um, I loved Unique. Again, it was one of those things where you had to keep up your own personal sales, yep. and I'm lazy. Like, I needed to get into a company on the bottom floor. I needed to be – this is where ADHD comes in real handy – you you got a lot of steam in the beginning, yeah. and I could build it up, and then I could just be like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And then people just send me checks. Yeah. So that's where I am. Yeah. That's where I am. Because I was not a multi-level marketing person at all. I mean, just 
Because back in the 80s and 90s, when you did multi-level marketing, it was like Amway, and then it was the hard sell. Yeah. And that's not my jam at all. That's never how, I'm a salesperson, and it's just not how I've ever sold anything. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I did. I do Young Living. I love the, I loved the product. It, there was something that happened that we used it for, and it completely changed. Like, I can't say it because it's like a medical claim, but we used it for something and it completely changed it. Like it was like the perfect antidote for it. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, I got to tell everybody about this. And so I did. And, but I was early on Yeah, and I was able to climb the ranks pretty well. And I worked it hard and I don't think anybody would tell you that I was a hard sell. I was just an evangelist for you just believed in your product. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, six years ago I had a baby and I had to stop working it as hard as I was working it. Mm-hmm. So I don't get checks now for as big as I used to get them. But I do get a check every month. Still from your downline. I still get, yeah, because I worked it so hard at then. Yeah. So I have mixed feelings about LuLaRoe because, or about, yeah, about the company. Um, because I get that they were predatory. And the way Mark and Deanne Steedham and their their family worked this company yeah is different than the way I've seen it work in the company that I'm with now I I don't I'm not here to say that the company that I rep is perfect because God knows I do not have rose-colored glasses on about that right right um but I will say that there's it there's a wide gap between how these two people ran their company and how yeah. our company is run now. Well, and I think what they did is something that I fell victim to, which was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if you wanted to be a work at home mom, your options were very, very limited. limited. It was pretty much you either did, you sold Mary Kay or Unique or Jane mm-hmm. or whatever, or you had some kind of business that you created on your own, which I did later on and I, I did real well at. But, um, you know, it wasn't work at home option. It wasn't remote office hours. It wasn't Zoom calls. It was, if you want a job, a full-time job, you get up and you go to the office. You got to go. And that's it. And you get your kid daycare. Oh, yeah. And you barely make any money if you have several in daycare. That's right. And so, you know, I, I can totally see that they started this in a time where there were a lot of women out there who had a heart to stay at home with their children, Mm -hmm. which a lot of us do. And if you don't, that's amazing too. Like I think everybody has their own path when it comes to that. Um, But they really, you know, jumped on these women that had a heart to be at home and they used that desire to be with their kids and to still be able to financially help their husbands in order to become millionaires. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get to talking specifically about LuLaRoe and how they ran their company and why it's really, why they're drawing so much attention. Right. Uh, uh, Just for them in particular. But so we talked about Mark and Deanne Steedham with that, (laughs) Deanne with that hair. Now I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm kind of like, I feel like I can um, identify with Deanne a little bit because man, I loved her shoes. Yeah. I loved her shoes. I loved all the color around her. She's a lot. She's very colorful. She's a lot. She's a lot. a lot. Yeah. I'm a I'm lot, lot too. So I kind I like color. I'm not a, I'm not a, a, you know, I just, I enjoy color. Now I do wear black all day long, Yeah, but I'm talking about around me. I like lots of color and I just saw her as someone who I think if I went a different way, I could be DMs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like plastic surgery. I can't afford it, but <laughs> I like it. And so I could relate there, you know. She was so funny when she would plead, like, ignorance on things. Oh, and then they she would just show got, her in video. I don't know. And then what? Did we do that? to the video. Yes, I did exactly that. Yeah, I did do oh that. Oh, she was funny. Yeah. And my favorite was when she would kind of touch her husband because he liked to talk. Oh, yeah, he did. And those kind of people can get you in trouble real quick. Yeah. And... She would just kind of put her hand on his leg and be like, oh, oh. Shh, shh. That's the universal symbol for, symbol for shut, shut up. Shut up. Yeah. yeah. But they reminded me of Jim and Tammy Faye because no matter what it what happened, they would try to put a positive spin on it. Yeah. And I actually just watched, um, before I came here, a 2020 that said, on Jim and oh Tammy. gosh, yeah, on Jim and Tammy, it was called Unfaithfully Yours. And Why haven't I watched that yet? It just came out last night. Anyway. Um, and so I was watching them and I was like, that's who that is. Like, 
They are the Jim and Tammy Faye of the network. Well, let marketing. me tell you, that's a very MLM y thing to say. Okay. Because um, at least that's what I found uh, in, in my own group of leaders. And you have to keep in mind these groups of leaders that I was, am, was in with, it's changed. Are. Um, it, we're, we're all in the same boat. Like you said, we're all just moms and we yeah. all just want better for our family and we want to be able to contribute. Right. And a lot of these people have no actual real life business experience. Mm-hmm. They're sort of learning the MLM business experience. And I think that's where most failures happen is you don't really understand the sales cycle and you don't understand right. that um, a business will go through these ebbs and flows and you it's okay to have a competitor and mm-hmm. and sometimes um, supply issues happen and that kind of thing. But and that's that, not how they train you. So what, what would happen is there's this one lady who is no longer with the company. She recently left and um, she's not in my, she was like lateral to me, uh, but she did very, very well. I mean, like millionaire kind of well. Wow. And um, she, I would complain about something that's happening that I thought was worthy to like vent about and wonder how can we fix this and when's the going to be relief and and she would say you need to put your positive pants on uh no ma'am have you ever heard anybody tell me that misty no i would be scared you know how to I tell to you <laughs> to put your positive you should pants never on. tell me to put my positive pants on oh and she talks like this and she would say you just have to put your positive pants on because these people this company just wants the best they for just you. love you yes Yes. Yeah. And so what happens is you you have you got this team mentality and that and I think that mm-hmm. happened too yeah. with LuLaRoe and that's natural. I mean, we all have this tribal thing that we you know, we have our team and we want it to win and we want it to be successful. Yeah. And so when somebody says, you know, maybe your team is struggling right now and we need to figure out how to make it better or it's really affecting me that they're doing something wrong. Yeah. And that offends some of these leaders and I think that's what happened two here like right. you, don't, you can't admit you have to admit your faults right, right. And they weren't admitting yes we have a problem yeah and th- instead they were just saying gaslighting this is your fault put your positive pants on you've got to keep going well and most of them have gotten themselves into a financial state that yeah they're making a lot of money but they've also invested a lot of money yeah and so when they see these cracks in the foundation they see destruction of their own financial Misty. well-being $5,000 to onboard. Girl. Minimum. Do you know what I would have to do with my husband to get $5,000? <laughs> I looked at him while we were watching this and I said, it's a $5,000 buy in. Now, this is not the $99.99 or $49.99 yeah. buy in like Jane Barry or Unique or whatever. Yeah. I was like, $5,000. And he was like, Misty. I. There's what? not enough things. There's not enough things. $5, like it wouldn't happen. And it wasn't, that's the minimum. The minimum. Because they even had like a $10,000 package. Cur, Ray, Z. Yeah. And you can't pick. So the thing is, you can't pick your, uh, you can pick the styles and you can pick the sizes that you order, but you can't pick the patterns on the items that you were ordering. So you could get. I mean, uh, if I couldn't have the ones with the starfish crawling up my cooch, I wouldn't want it. Well, or the t- Leaning Tower of Pisa that look, makes you look transgender. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you have a penis coming out of you. Yeah. They had some design issues. Yeah, they had some design issues. But that's just, a, that is, when I think of that, I, I may as well start my own actual boutique. Like, right. Where I can go to market and pick my own things for that amount of money. Which I is mean, what I think these women thought that they were doing. Yeah, like, well, yes. this is my own boutique in my home. Yeah. But you're not getting to pick what you sell. So if you don't have control over that, how do you market it? How do you right. say, this is the best thing ever? Yeah. You don't even know what's coming in your box. Well, you pretend that it's the best thing ever. Yeah. You pretend that it's the best thing ever because, you know, that lady that was in the documentary named Becca Peters, she's got a, That's- she was kind of like the one that, so she was the one that sold washi tape. Uh-huh. Okay. She has a group on Facebook called the Defectors Group, uh-huh. and I got in that group because I'm messy. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, girls! <laughs> like th- 
three or four years ago, I read an article about the problems that had started popping up. And so mm-hmm. I, it interested me because I also rep an, a multi-level marketing company. And I wanted to know, or, you know, is this something that I should expect? Because I was new to the whole thing. Yeah. And um, we did not... We did not have these kinds of problems, so I can happily report. But um, so I got into this group, and I I was not interacting. I just was there strictly to look around, and um, so I had been seeing these things pop up mm-hmm. well before it became public. Like you would see these women just go in there and say, "I can't get my money back." They told me that they were going to give me my money back, and they didn't they give it back give to it me. Back. Yeah. Or I can't get in the queue. The queue is, you know, like they're going to have a capsule release yeah. and. Um, and that would happen with unique. Sometimes we would, they would release a new product and I mean, it would sell out because if you didn't buy enough, I mean, especially if it was something new, I mean, women loved this. It was great makeup. Yeah. Um, but it would sell out and you would get in there at whatever time and the system would crash. Yeah. Or somebody had ordered too many or they would get so-and-so to order. Like it was always, it felt like something was kind of, you know, messed up. Well, I think that's probably true across the board of anybody that does that kind of thing. But, mm-hmm. I mean, that website will always crash, like on Black Friday. Or, of course, yeah. You know, something like that. But I think, in particular, here, they were giving some of the higher, um, ge- the gener- the ones who generated more money, more, more access. of a chance to get right. these capsules. And so then you're, you know, your person who just dropped $5,000 on four credit cards your little to guy. be able to start this business is getting what they called, this was what they generically called the Dorito chip designs, yeah. which is like the 80s triangles with the little. Ugh. And so those seem to be like on almost everything. And poor Sally over here pumping breast milk all night long to sell it yes. to pay for her LuLaRoe. Yeah. And then one time that Patrick guy who was the like the designer, mm-hmm. he was bald. Yeah. He one time um, made leggings and sent them out to his IFRs, the Inter- Independent Fashion Representatives, I guess is what they're called. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he put his face on leggings. He sent them out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, women would order um, a, a box of leggings or whatever, you know. Right. With their, with their huge next order, which yeah. they're supposed to replenish after every single pop-up. Right. So, you're always You're always spending. ordering. Uh, every money, everything you ever make goes back into the business, which, right. honestly, is how you do business. You make money, you put it back in the business, and it takes a while for you to generate profit right Um, now it didn't but it didn't start off this way like let's talk a little bit about how she started the business because when I first started watching and they start going through the history of how Lula mm -hmm. Row came to be you're kind of like impressed like I was kind of like whoa this is a a go-getter right here like this was a woman who started just making maxi skirts Misty she said she made a hundred thousand skirts I do not believe that. You don't believe it? I do not believe that. You don't believe it? Mm -mm. I believe she had those little daughters in there making skirts. Probably. Yeah. $100,000 is, I mean, uh, 100,000 skirts is a significant amount of skirts. That's a lot. Now, listen, I used to have a little business called Sassy Straps. Yes. And it was, I made camera straps that went on DSLR cameras. And I made a lot of them. And I even sold them in Rhapsody, some little gift shops and things. I had a good little business going. I would go to little uh, craft fairs, and I had a little website. I sold them. And let me tell you something. You would be surprised at how many sassy straps I could make. Really? When I was under the gun. Really? Yeah. One. I remember one time I had, it was when they had just first started doing like these, um, jane.com where you go on and you can buy so and so for real cheap well a lot of these women are um self craft makers and they make these things and send them to this company okay and this company ships them out okay Okay. and so they had accepted sassy straps for one christmas season and i thought well this is great and so basically they were like send us five styles we will sell them for you. You make them, send them to us, and we'll send you a check. They got a cut of it. So yeah. I was like, this is great for everybody. 500 straps later. <laughs> oh, my gosh. One Christmas. I'm not kidding. Philip worked at a hotel at that time, and my mother graciously kept my children for a weekend. Actually, it was like four days. 
Philip took me to the hotel, and while he worked, I stayed in a room with a sewing machine. Oh, my gosh. And I made 500 sassy straps. Over one weekend? It was about four days, and then um, a week prior to that. So I had like a week and four days to get them done. Yeah. I was... So you did them in nine days? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nine days? Well, that's week, like like seven days, and then four yeah. days, so 11 days. Yeah, so 11 days. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was busting them. How do we extrapolate that? Like, I can't do the math really fast, but eleven yeah. days. I mean, I was making like probably eighty a day, or oh, something. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I mean, sew. they they were they were simple design, but that's you have to cut them out. Yeah. You have to sew them together. You right. have to flip them. You have to iron them. Yeah. And you have to sew in the things. And so never again. Never. <laughs> never again. Again. Oh. I mean, yeah. It okay. was it was awful. Well, maybe okay. Maybe she's telling the truth. I mean, it just seems like I mean, an if it was over years, number. I might I might believe it if okay. it was over years. All right. Well, I just my instinct is to say that is a significant number of skirts. Yeah, hundred thousand skirts. But okay. All right. So yeah. So she was making these maxi skirts, and this was after she had started selling children's clothes. Mm-hmm. Like she was selling children's clothes because she's got the personality, right? She's got the she she seems she has like, the charisma. Yeah, she seems like. She draws people to her. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not so much now because of what we know. If the documentary is to believe, like she's friendly and happy and sweet. I mean, that's how she comes off. I'm not saying she is that way. Right, right. So I hope that makes sense. Like she's chipper and she's like, everybody, everything's Ooh, positive. I've got yeah. my positive pants on, you know. And so I can see where people would be drawn to that. Right. Before she got private jets and, you know, chartering cruise ships and that kind of stuff. Sure. So I can see where people would be drawn to her buying all these clothes. And then, you know, I guess maybe she could have sold 100,000 skirts. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so she sold the skirts. And then she says uh, she accidentally starts LuLaRoe, basically, Mm -hmm. because somebody was like, I can sell these for you. Yeah. And she's like, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about once they've started this company and they've got some representatives under them and they have to start coming up with some ways to train these people. They have to start coming up with kind of guidelines of how they're going to get this merchandise out to these people. And um, behind every multi-level marketing business, there's kind of a um, like a mission statement. Yeah. Okay. And so LuLaRoe, I don't know their mission statement per se, word by word, but basically what they try to try to sell this under is kind of a, one woman said, like a Mormon platform. Like, um, and I'm I'm not Mormon, I don't know, I have friends that are Mormon, but um, they were using a lot of Mormon scripture, and then also on top of this, we're pretty much saying you need to do this business um, not for you, but for your husband. <gasps> yes. Because you're going to start it, but you need to hand it over to him. Because he's, he's smarter and he can do it better. What is wrong with these people? People will listen to him. Girl, I wish I would sell $1 million worth of leggings and then be like, Philip Gillespie, it's all for you. <laughs> <Psh>. <laughs> no. No, ma'am. Uh-uh. Uh, okay, before we talk about that, the, the LuLaRoe mission statement is to create freedom, serve others, and strengthen families through fashion. <laughs> through fashion. <laughs> it's a community where lives are being improved through love, purpose, confidence, trust, and growth. I mean, that's why Philip wears the suits he does. Yeah. To improve lives through to fashion. To improve lives through fashion. That's what he does. <laughs> he likes to bring the gospel through fashion. Well, it is. Well, you know what? He brings me a lot of joy. He really does. When I see him yeah. in those suits. Um, yes, my favorite, very favorite was when that guy was doing like in-house trainings and he was, uh-huh. a, he's just a husband. And he said, ladies, you have to let us in. <laughs> you have to let us in. He said, we gave you $5,000 to start this. Thing. Yeah. So now you have to give us part of this business. And P.S. LuLaRoe doesn't make men's clothing. <gasps> what the heck? He just wanted the money. He just wanted the money. He just wanted the money because... So and I love so the it's one all, it, when when he makes the money, it's his money that he gave to her, right? But when she makes the money, it's their money. It's their money or his money. Yeah, 
Yeah. Exactly. Right. And this was like, this was, you know, that lady that was on there who lost her house and her marriage and she was a, what they call a coach. Yeah. Which is like the highest level. Mm -hmm. Um, she, she talked about how once she achieved that highest level, they no longer would talk to her. They would only address her husband. Right. And they wanted her husband to quit his job. Yes. They want the husbands to quit their jobs. Um, they want the women to give the business over to their husbands because in hopes that these families will become totally and utterly dependent yeah. on Lula Rowe. Yeah. That they have no other source of income. And my favorite were, and now I did like the one little couple, I can't remember their names, but the guy was like, I did, I, you know, I got into the business and I started helping her, but then I started getting really uncomfortable yeah. because it all became about how I was supposed to kind of lead her. And this was her business. Like I was just yeah. helping her. Also, she was a strong personality. She was, right. yeah, it yeah. wasn't like she needed leading. Right. But then some of these husbands think like they're so cute that <laughs> they're going to come on these lives and all these women are going to flock to them and be like, oh, I just want to buy some leggings from him. Well, they were encouraged to do that. They yeah. were encouraged to, you know, for instance, during a live, yeah, um, have them try on the leggings so that everybody would think it's so funny. And oh, it it's is so funny cute. to see a so man funny. in leggings. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I put makeup on Philip for Unique. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Yeah. I mean, it is. Well, no, I didn't. He put makeup on me. He wouldn't let me put makeup on him. Well, he's got limits. He's got limits. He's got but limits. he did do a makeover on me, and it was hilarious. Yeah, I do remember that, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but but the short of it is they were really just trying to make sure that... that the whole family. This family, they could never leave LuLaRoe. I mean, if right. you've got... A, if you have somebody that's building a business for you mm -hmm. that's bringing in thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month, yeah, tens of thousands a month, yeah, well, you would definitely want them to be with you forever. Right. Yeah. Right. But... But they got really involved in personal lives, which is really where I think people have had enough. Because it, it's one thing to have gaslighting when they tell you you're not working hard enough, mm -hmm. which is a standard MLM tactic. Very. Um, because um, nobody will acknowledge that some people are made for sales and some people are not made for sales. Yeah. They feel like it's a one size fits all. And, and that's that's true of, I think, the industry as a whole. Um, so that's one thing. It's another thing to be told... You're not, you're, you're not working hard enough. Right. Okay. It's another thing to not have a good product mm -hmm. and to tell you to lie about the product like they were telling them. Your leggings are fine. There's no holes. It's totally fine. Right. Um, there's no mold in that yeah, bag. Yeah, there's no mold in that bag. That is not a wet pair of leggings. <laughs> <laughs> I wish somebody would tell me that pair of leggings is not wet when I'm holding it. Yes, when you're wringing it and out. And I'm, I'm pouring water out of the bag. Those aren't wet. They are not wet. No, yeah. Your sense of smell is altered mm -mm. because of COVID. So, no, no. that's the Holy Spirit so all, all over of the that, You know, all of that is enough, right? LuLaRoe, Mark and Deanne Steedham go a step further and they get involved in your personal life. Right. And we're not talking necessarily just about your marriage, which they do get involved in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Deanne had even sexual advice for her IFRs. Uh. P.S. I'm not taking advice from her. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. No. No. Oh, we haven't even talked about how they have 8,000 children. Oh, yeah. And one of them married another one. Two of their kids are married to each other. Yes, they are. They're not biological They're siblings, not biological, but they still, know each other, that's but it's still creepy. weird. Yeah. Um, so all of that is one thing. But then she starts telling people, you got to have gastric sleeve. Honey, you've got to look good in those leggings if you've you're going to sell them. So going down to Tijuana... I've got a van that's going to pick you up. Y'all, we're not joking. This is Right, we're not making this, this up. Is, this is on the documentary. Yeah. We're going to get a van full of ladies that need to lose a couple. Yeah. We're going to take them down to Tijuana, yeah. get them the gastric sleeve so they can lose weight to look better in these leggings so they can sell more leggings. Oh, yeah. You know, I, in that group that I told you that I was in, they've been talking about that for a long time, and I couldn't even believe what I was reading. And if you do it, maybe you'll get to go on the cruise with us. <laughs> and you can wear a two-piece. <laughs> what? Yeah. Can you imagine? <clears throat> I mean, I, can it's you just, imagine? It's just, it's mind-boggling And the worst part me. is there were so many women that took her up on that offer. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not clear. Did she pay for it? She got them deals. 
Okay. She had a deal running with this surgeon. Yes, in, in I'm doing air quotes. Surgeon yeah. in Tijuana. And if you would go with her group, she could get you these group rates. Okay. And so they would all go down together and get them done. Yeah. And then come back. I mean, no, she ain't trying to pay for nobody's. I mean, get real. Look, but, I told my husband that I'm pretty sure I'm about to onboard with LuLaRoe. Just so I can go down. Just so I can. <laughs> I mean, if they'll do, if they'll give me a boob job, I've never had any. Let's do it. I'll do, I'll sell leggings tomorrow. We will come back looking. Fabulous. We'll to, yeah, we'll have to get our hair white blonde and wear Look, let me, lots of makeup. Now, and, my hair's already white blonde. Now, listen, this is where I would struggle with LuLaRoe. Because in one of my multi-level marketing businesses that I did, like I said, there were many, I had one woman tell me that the reason I wasn't making the sales I needed to make was because I wasn't getting up and getting fully dressed like I was going to an office every day. Okay. She said, if you will get up and you will dress, not in regular clothes, but like you're going to an office, then you will make better sales. And I told her that I will not get out of my pajamas until after 12. (laughs) And she will leave. Like a reasonable person. Like a reasonable adult. I will go through the carpool in my robe, and she will shut up about it. She doesn't get to tell you. You don't, you're not the boss of me. She does not get to tell you You don't get to tell me what to wear, much less to put a gastric sleeve in my body. Yeah. Yeah. So, fun fact, just because you sign up under somebody does not make them the expert on sales and business. No, most of these women don't have business degrees. In fact, I would say about 99% 99% of them. Of them. Yeah. I think... And the people training them at LuLaRoe right. don't have business degrees. No. They're just like somebody's aunt's cousin's brother. Yeah, they're just writing up these yes. training seminars, and they're mostly hiring their kids. Yeah. Well, they had a family meeting. Yeah, family meeting. And they were meeting. like, you get a job, you, you get, get a job, job you, you get, get a job. job. Yeah. Yeah. And you're a VP. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, so they go back and forth. On this documentary, they go back and forth because they they've they been sued dozens of times, but the big, big, big lawsuit that they had recently was the state of Washington. The state of Washington sued them for being a pyramid scheme. Right. So what's the difference in a pyramid scheme? So pyramid schemes are illegal. They're mm-hmm. federally illegal, right? Right. Um, and what that means is you make your money off an opportunity for somebody. Basically, it's a Ponzi scheme, right? Right. So you're... You're not selling any product. Yeah. And that's what was happening here. They were... You're selling a dream. You're selling the dream. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And they could say, well, no, we're selling clothes, but they were bonusing them just because they were building a team or different... Right. Their bonus structure was so that the more people you got, the more money you would make... And you didn't have to do anything after that. So their their leader bonuses would amount to more than what their what their sales commissions were. Right, mm-hmm. and um, and that's again pretty standard in the in MLM industry. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, it's just how you do it. And and I mean, I get it. And I have actually benefited from that before mm-hmm. too. But what the problem came in is. With LuLaRoe, they were not just rewarding people for growing their team. They were only fixated on growing your team. Right. It wasn't. And so what that would mean is these women were like, they were being told, you know, don't worry so much about selling that Carly. Why don't you worry about finding three or four more people to sell under you, to onboard? Because they were not selling the product to consumers they were selling the product to to each other each other correct they're not selling it to an end user right and And they had also let the um market become so saturated Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. yeah they didn't have a cutoff on how many of these fashion consultants they could have they were onboarding upwards of a million dollars a day oh yeah i mean to the point that people were waiting months and months to get their shipments in yeah to be consultants well I mean, you know as well as I do, and this was my problem like when I did Young Living, there were already so many people Mm -hmm. doing oils that you run out of customers. Well, the guy, the MLM expert said that you can only go down 13 levels before you exceed the population of the earth. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but, but, you know, I, I have, it's, I've, I've mixed feelings because like I said, 
I love my MLM. Like mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't look at it with rose colored glasses. Like I said, I recognize that there are lots of faults and things that can be improved. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I get, I, I understand the structure. I, I don't know. It's kind of like with churches, right? People are like throw away. They just leave the church because of hypocrisy and because of this right. that, or the other. <laughs> but I understand. I understand people and I understand mm-hmm. nature and kind of the same thing here like I understand the business world I understand the structure yeah and there are people that take advantage of it and I'm not against MLMs at all but I think it needs to be understood like you were saying um there is a very small percentage of women that can do it and make a full-time full-time income okay um and even less women that can make more than a full-time income right and the majority of these women who are selling these things, these MLM things, are not doing it for full-time income. They're doing it for extra money. Right. For things that are extra or to be able to give little Susie dance classes mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and that's that's great. That's fine. That's what I think these things are, are great for. Yeah. But I think that women need to be told that in the beginning and nobody's told that yeah everyone's told they can be the millionaire correct yeah correct you can you can reach the top and the truth is you can't just like the rest of the private sector not everybody's going to be ceo and not everybody's going to be cfo no you know? you're not uh, most of us are just going to be the underlings right right but mm-hmm. you're exactly right and that's where lula got in trouble because the state of washington said we're seeing a pattern you're selling to each other, mm-hmm. and you have predatory tactics, mm-hmm. and um, and so they lost the lawsuit, and so they had to pay out four point three million. I think they didn't say the number there, but I looked it up. It was four point three million, <sighs> and but you know what? Um, I did the math, and there the checks that are, that were being cut to like thirty six hundred people. It's only like eleven hundred bucks per person. Mm-hmm that they had to send out and 43 4.3 million dollars in a billion dollar company yeah is not all that much it's not yeah it's not all that much yeah yeah so they were onboarding like a million dollars a day the right. real rock stars of this documentary i think you'll agree are Lachey and oh, what is his name oh my word the I guy, think I got fired. Derek was yeah, his name I was that his was. name i can't think of his name uh, oh man I can never think of people's names. Um, I didn't write it down either. Yeah. Uh, wh- but you know who I'm talking about? The customer service guy. Yes. Who hates Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> she can't, he said he loves Kelly Clarkson's music, but he can't listen to her to this day. Why doesn't he hate Katy Perry? I don't know. Maybe he does and he just didn't have time. So they brought Katy Perry $5 million. Crazy. $5 million bucks for her to play at their convention. Uh-huh. Um, Kelly Clarkson also played at their convention. Crazy. And then, of course, who else would you get but um, Slater from Say By Bell? They're on par. Like the Sign me up. Are class A. Sign right? me up right now. <laughs> so these women who are, who are really, I mean, they're probably millennials, but maybe a little bit like older millennials they totally remember Slater oh yeah they were like get my picture with Slater <laughs> yeah that's kind of predatory if you ask me yeah <laughs> they were like a lot join Lula Bro, get Mario whatever I feel like is. Mario Lopez got victimized in that you think so did Katy Perry yeah and Kelly Clarkson. wow can you imagine what they think now they're probably like how embarrassed are they or maybe they're laughing all the way to the bank <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I mean, do you think that they wore a Carly dress while they were singing or something? I'm wondering, did they make them wear the clothes? I don't know. Hey, what do you think about these clothes? Okay, can I be honest? Oh, gosh. Look, I know we have LuLaRoe consultants that we're friends with, and I have known people. Now, listen, I've never bought a piece of LuLaRoe, and let me tell you why. It is not my style, even though I'm sitting here in leggings and a Mm t-shirt, but it is not my style. I do not think it is flattering on bodies, Um, and I'm not a fan of the design work. So for me, it was never anything that I was like, oh, I got to get my hands on that maxi skirt or, you know, those leggings or whatever. And also, P.S., I'm cheap. And so I would look at that and I would go, well, I can go to Walmart and get a pair of leggings for $5. I mean, I'm not about to pay 40 yeah. bucks for leggings. Yeah. And so the LuLaRoe thing never really was good.
good for me, yeah. number one, because I don't care what everybody else is wearing. Yeah. And there was a time when everybody wanted some Lola Row leggings. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember and them talking about how comfortable they were and blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't care. And I don't like the way they look. And they're just not cute to me. Well, okay. So. Well, there you have it. I never fell on that bandwagon. Do I get it? Yeah, I get it. But yeah. it just wasn't for me. So. I have bought some LuLaRoe and I'm not, I bought like, I did buy some leggings because they were, at, when I bought them was, I think at the beginning of the hoopla mm-hmm. and they, they were good, like solid, um, like buttery and like what they talk about, the buttery leggings. Mm-hmm. But, um, and then I bought like a jacket, maybe like a cardigan, a cardigan. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's it. As a favor to somebody or because you really wanted it? No, I liked the cardigan. I still have it upstairs. It's got like big roses on it. Because I'm not going to lie, 90% of things I've bought from multi-level marketing businesses were from friends because I was doing them a favor. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Yeah. And most of the people who probably bought from me were doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. true. That, that can be true. But no, I'm, I'm not... I'm not cheap necessarily, but I can be frugal. And so if it's not something that I totally need and absolutely loved, I wouldn't have bought it. Yeah. And the cardigan is just a plain old, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's hard to ruin a cardigan. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like it's a certain style. It's just sleeves and a <laughs> pockets on the right, side. Right, right. Um, and I think most of these, I think where they really found their niche was in the get, which was, we yes. only make a limited number of these patterns. I mean, it's the same Beanie Baby yes, thing. absolutely. We're only going to make so many of these, and what you can't have is what you want. And yeah. so... The unicorns. The unicorns. These women would be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to Disney. I want cute Disney leggings. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to buy this pattern. Now, they could have sold me on that, like for yeah. a trip or for a holiday. Sure. They probably could have sold me. Um, but for everyday use, I wouldn't have done it. But these women would be like, I have to get this particular one because they're not going to make it anymore yeah oh yeah and i gotta get it i gotta get it now oh yeah it was like the cabbage patch doll of the 80s right or... and i think some of these reps kind of got addicted to that too because even though in my eyes it sucks not to be able to to pick out what you're buying right. especially when i own it and i can't return it right um it was kind of almost like fun for them to see if they could get that wanted legging or yeah. that one top that everybody's wanting yeah. or whatever, this one that's out of, you know, limited edition. So it became kind of a, you know, fascination for them, too, to see what's going to be I in my box. cannot identify with any of that. Me neither. That is not, um, I mean, that's just true, really, of almost anything in my life. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I mean, I First of all, I'm not a fashionista, so I would not be hunting for something like that. No. I mean, it's just not my jam. Um, and I I can't think of anything like, you know, a, a kitchen, like there's a, a KitchenAid that's like a particular color mm-hmm. that I love, but I'm not out hunting for it and waiting to buy a KitchenAid until I get that color or, right. you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I'm just like, if okay, we're not we're not going to call everybody I know to find this one piece of leggings that's right. got an actual donut on it or something. Exactly. <laughs> I, I can't identify with that at all. Yeah. But I did. I mean, I can see. I can see where people would be comfortable with some of the things that Lularoe would because what they try to do is be all things to all people mm-hmm. with those designs and um, and that, and they worked for some people and they didn't work for, for other people. Yeah. But um, I did not, I, I've never bought any of the dresses or. Yeah. And I couldn't be one of the ones that, I mean, I know a lot of these women do lives and stuff where they do like unboxings. My face never lies. And so if I <laughs> did a live unboxing and pulled out something but ugly, yeah, I, I'd never sell it because yeah. I'd be like, <gasps> What is yeah, this? What in the world are yeah, they that's me? why I could never do that thing where the w- ladies get the um, the oysters and open them up <gasps> to get the oh pearls. Gosh. Although I'm obsessed with watching those videos, so fun they're so fun to watch. But like, I'd get some pearl that looked like a piece of doo doo, and I'd be like, "Oh, n- nobody wants this. this. Yeah. Y'all don't want this." Yeah, like I couldn't do it. I forgot about the pearls that were, that play. Yeah. I think they went out of business. Did they? Yeah. I think they went out of business. I love watching those slimy little videos. They're so gross. I can't imagine how they kept those waiting for somebody to stab themselves in the hand, though. 
Oh, yes. How do I, I always sh- thought that would happen. I would cut seven of my fingers off. I always thought that would happen. Yeah. Um, also, like, I need to understand how that worked because... Yeah, how do you know there's pearls in there? Well, they're farmed, so you know that, like... Yeah, but you don't know. You don't know what's in it, I guess. I don't but know. how do you know it actually made a but pearl? Also, I don't want... I don't want buckets of oysters in my house. Pew-wee. I don't want that. I mean, these people were sitting no. on their kitchen tables opening up oysters. Can you imagine sitting down on the couch with your man about to watch a movie and you put your hand up by oh. his his face to rub his cheek and he's like, ooh, that's fishy. Oh, honey, I'm coming to bed in just a few minutes after my live. Yeah, I just yeah. got to go pour some ketchup on my hands yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get this fish smell off. Oh Be there in a minute. It's so gross. They would just open these five-gallon buckets full yeah. of, I guess it was five-gallon buckets. Ugh. Seems like I remember that. But anyway, I, love I totally them. forgot about that. I totally yeah. forgot about that. Um, but anyway, the clothes, they're just, they weren't my jam because most of the time, I did buy a couple of dresses, I remember, because it was somebody that was going out of business. And when they I do bet that. they were going out of business. <laughs> when they do that, that was my favorite. Like, if I ever saw anybody going out of business, I would totally look and see, is there anything maybe that I might like? And yeah. almost always. Almost never. There was never. What can I grab out of this house, Brian? Yeah, but I did get, I remember I got one for Catalina because there was, it was like a really tiny dress and she never liked it. Mm -hmm. Like I bought it for, I don't know, $6 or something. Yeah. Like I bought it at a loss for them. Yeah. Um, They were just trying to get rid of it. And I don't even remember who that was, but. And so a lot of these women end up in that position. They, they purchase all this merchandise. They're not able to build their team the way that they thought that they would be able to. Or they're not able to sell the items that they're getting in their boxes. Or sometimes they're getting damaged items. Yeah. They're getting moldy items. Everything's just kind of going downhill. And so they they file this. One of the ladies files a lawsuit and says, look, they won't let me return any of this stuff. It's damaged. It smells. I mean, it wasn't just, oh, well, you can't return the stuff that's in good standing condition, they wouldn't even take back the mold. Right. Like, they were like, you bought it. They wouldn't acknowledge it. They wouldn't acknowledge it. They bought it at yours. So she files the lawsuit, and she wins. And so Lula Rose says, okay, we're going to come up with a new... um, Return policy. A new policy. You can return anything you want for LuLaRoe. We will give you all your money back. Now this is a business that has no risks. Yeah. You can buy as much as you want to and return every bit of it and always get your money back. So the women bam. Are, Yeah, bam, thick. So the women are like, cool, yeah, let's do it. Um, again, that kind of hypes up there. Mm-hmm. They're onboarding a little bit because right. women are feeling comfortable that, yeah, you know, there's, work, no, I can send it back. there's no risk. I can send it back. Well, they do that for a little bit, and then they go, eh, never mind. Why did, mom, well, because mom. they had so many people that left. Let me tell you. This, and I love that they put on there, there's no time limit to this. No time limit. But that also meant it's indefinite. you never know when it's going to be up either. It reminds me of the story my mother tells when she lived in communist Cuba. She and her <laughs> family lived in communist Cuba. And there were starting to be, like, people were starting to rebel. And they were like, what's happening? We did not bargain for a communist dictator when we helped in the revolution. Right. And one day, Fidel Castro said, you know what? I'm tired of this. If you want to leave for the United States, you can leave. Bye. Thinking ain't nobody leaving. Felicia. So thousands upon thousands of Cubans left Cuba. And that's how my mother made it to the United States. The mass exodus. Yes, mass exodus. So it reminds me of that. Like, Lula yeah. Rose was like, Fine. If you think it's really bad, then we'll give you your money back. And they didn't really think that that would happen. And a lot of women won their money and back. this was when they... Now, when they did that, it would take five, six, seven, eight months to get their checks back. Right. Because I remember being in that group again and watching all these women say, I'm done with LuLaRoe. I'm sending back all my stock. Mm-hmm. And then they would say... And then, like, they would take pictures of everything they were sending because... They didn't want to get told. You didn't send send it back. Right. You didn't send it back. Um, Like they would take pictures of like wrapping it up Mm -hmm. (laughs) and, and, um, you know, putting the tape on there and going to the UPS store and getting the tracking. Yeah. Because they did not want to be found like without their money. And this was not a few items. I mean, you have to imagine that these women had rooms dedicated to LuLaRoe, garages, dedicated built onto their house they were told to do that yeah yeah they were told to do that because this is their boutique but i also can understand that too i mean if you're doing a live and you think you want i mean if you have a regular boutique 
Yeah. If you're not in LuLaRoe and you have a regular clothing boutique, you're going to want that anyway. Right. So I get it. What what really gets me is being told how to run your business. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is what you need to do in right. order to be successful, successful with us instead of kind of giving le giving them autonomy because it is their own business. Mm -hmm. um, but then they changed it. Then they changed it. <laughs> they were like, you know what? We're, I don't guess we can really afford this. So... Um, you then they said back it, you can oh, you can't return holiday items. Right. You can't return. They had come out with this thing called the Elegant Collection. I think it was called, and it was basically LeMay on all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Shine and Fine Wine yes. Collection. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have yes. you seen this stuff? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, am I wrong? I mean, it's basically LeMay just it's on like the regular go clothes. Gold LeMay, yeah. And so you couldn't return that one. Mm -hmm. um, you couldn't, re it, it, everything had to be in original packaging. So if you had taken everything Tags, out to put on hangers, yeah. And t yeah, everything had to be in the original. So that would limit how much people Basically could Basically unopened back. boxes. Exactly. So the only way you could send it back is if it arrived at your house and then you immediately turned around and put a return sticker on it. Right. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. So that messed people up big time. That's when people started losing their livelihoods. Yeah. That's when real really people started going bankrupt and yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, people were going bankrupt. People were getting divorces. Oh. People were l literally losing their lives and livelihood yeah. because of it. Because of it. Yeah. Yeah. That is so jacked up. Yeah. <laughs> so jacked up. Yeah. Let's talk about how they started to silence people when they didn't like what they were saying. So a couple of the... Um, LuLaRoe higher-ups decided, hey, you know, we, we love LuLaRoe, and we loved the product when it was good. Yeah. Um, we don't like it the way it is now, right. and we're going to tell our customers, hey, we're going we're gonna to work to make this better for you, and we don't agree with what's going on, and we're going to do things differently than we have before. Yeah. And so they wanted to go back to old LuLaRoe and the way that things used the to be. The way they fell in love with the company. The way they fell like in love. Feel. Yeah, that small feel. And LuLaRoe caught wind of that and said, yeah, fired. They will terminate a ca an account in a heartbeat. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, yes. How can you terminate someone's account that they've paid for? Uh, it's in the terms of service. Okay. It's in the terms of service. When you sign up, um, for instance, Young Living... Um, they will terminate an account. Um, over the last few years, they have gotten very, very strict about um, our representatives having making medical claims like okay. frankincense cures cancer or autism or autism exactly, um, or uh, also people making um, financial claims like people would screenshot how much money they made that month to encourage other people that they can do the same thing and join right. my team and I can Put a help picture you. of a check, yeah. Well, those things are illegal to do. Oh, okay. Those are federally, federal laws. So, like, okay. the Federal Trade Commission does not allow you to make income claim, income claims like that because mm -hmm. it's predatory. You, you, not everybody is going to be able to do that. Philip calls that the me monster. Yes. When people are like, look at me, look at me, look what I did. Oh, my gosh. There are definitely some people like that. Yeah. And Lula Row was big about that. They wanted you, if you had something good happen to you, whether that be oh, gosh. you buy a house or a car or whatever, that you put hashtag because of Lula Row. Yes, I, I have seen that across the board on a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. And it gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. I, I, I guess I understand the sentiment um, if you're trying to build a team. Mm -hmm. But no. Yeah. I, I don't like that. And on top of pretty much, you know, firing these people, canceling their accounts to where they could no longer sell LuLaRoe, um, a lot of these higher ups had become like family uh -huh. with the company because the company literally was a blood family. Like everybody in there was related and they cut off all contact and personal relationships and then told other LuLaRoe employees that they were not to have contact with them either. It's like freaking Scientology. They're, they're being what's called fair gamed. You uh -huh. know what fair gaming is. Yes. And uh, what's the other one? Um, when you cut off somebody. Uh, oh, gosh. Suppression. Su they're, su they're suppressives, basically. So yeah. you cut them off. I can't remember yeah. what they call it. And that's how you know you're kind of in a cult, right? Yeah, that's right. when. When somebody tries to pull you away from people that you love and people. Mm -hmm. Let me go back real quick and finish what I was saying. 
you were, we were talking about terminating an account Mm -hmm. Um, in the terms of service it says you can't make medical claims and you can't make income claims if you do these things on social media that we see you'll be terminated and people get terminated left and right or they'll get temporarily suspended and said and sent a letter that says you need to pull this down from public view because what will happen is the federal government will come down hard on young living and that's a billion dollar plus company right and um, to them it's not worth it so you have to come up with creative ways to help people understand how the product helps so hashtag kind of stuff so people do that kind of stuff and like I said or like when we first started we had a situation where we used one of our one of those products for a medical situation and we had really great success Mm -hmm. and when it happened to us I took pictures and I put it all over the internet because I was like y'all not gonna believe this yeah this totally worked for us and that's when I started, people were calling me because they were like, they had the same problem. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't for two or three years later that I realized that's not a legal thing that you can do. And, and so I had, like, I took it down. And if somebody were to ask me on a personal level, Amaryllis, what did you use for so that? And so. Then I would tell you just on a personal level. But the, you can't promote your business. You can't do it. it that way. And so Young Living, in an effort to protect them as a company, will they'll um, deactivate anybody. So what was happening with LuLaRoe is they didn't care. They were like, we want you to make income claims. We think that that will bring in new people. And so that becomes a problem when it becomes that large and people, it becomes predatory. But if you said, yeah, you're right, your leggings were holy and moldy, then they deactivate you too. Uh, Yes. Right. Yeah. No, they weren't deactivate at LuLaRoe. They weren't deactivating you for doing the illegal things. They were deactivating you for, for doing, doing moral things. The moral things, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that's, that really stinks. That mm-hmm. really stinks. And then to be told that you can't talk to somebody. I had a similar situation. They did not tell me that I couldn't talk to somebody. But I have seen it happen where somebody decides to leave the company and... They're isolated. They're isolated and spoken poorly of and... Don't be um, like so-and-so. Yeah. 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 In fact, I actually saw it recently. I saw it happen with one of the big people that left... She used to talk that way about other people. I had seen it, have screenshots and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then she decided to leave and people came down hard on her. So I guess it's just sort of the culture, I guess. You just have to be mindful that business is business and friendships are friendships. Friendships. Yeah. So, yeah. So I saw, I've seen some different things and it's just the culture. Mm -hmm. And I think it also has to do with women who do MLMs. And I'm, you know, I am one of these people that do MLMs, but because they don't have business experience and they've just been told what to think Mm -hmm. by somebody who is making money. They don't really know how to handle when there's a new competitor in town. Right. Or, you know, a new company that might be taking away part of their team or something. They just don't know how to just kind of roll with the punches and go. And so then you end up with some real hurt feelings and, and bad things. And then people just leaving and not trying anymore. And so then it becomes a failure. Right. But when it comes to LuLaRoe in particular, Man, it's those two at the top that were the problem. Yeah. And they're still there. That's okay. So this is the thing that I was just like, oh, my gosh. So because I knew, of course, LuLaRoe's still a company. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still see people doing lives on Facebook. I know people that are still part of it. And so I look at this and I go, how are y'all still a company? Like, And then I also wondered, okay, well, now this documentary is out. How much longer will they be a company? And are these people who have invested so much and maybe they haven't had a bad experience. Maybe they've had a good experience. Yeah. Well, there were, you know, we didn't even talk about those people. There How? were plenty of people that had great experiences. Yeah. I, mean, I love the lady that was like, this is a white people business. A white people <laughs> business? <laughs> she said, I love getting on the cruise ship with all them white people. I love white people. Yeah. Yeah. Lachey was like, I'm not going on the cruise because of all the white people. And then the other lady was like, this is a white people business. I'm the exception, but I have a yeah. new house because of LuLaRoe. Right. Yeah. And there are, and like you said, there are people that have made a lot of money. There yeah. are people who have had good experiences and still have good experiences. Yeah. Obviously, they're still selling it. Um, but then I wonder about them. Like, you know, what's going to happen to their business yeah. once people start watching the documentary or listening to this podcast? So I'm going to make a prediction. Okay. These types of things happen. Okay. I mean, um, I think you could probably, like, Herbalife went through it several years ago. There was a documentary about them. They're still kicking. Okay. I mean, they're opening up nutrition stores all over the city. This local nutrition store, there's one in Helena, there's one all over the place. Mm-hmm. It's Herbalife. Okay. Did you not know that? No. 
it's Herbalife. You walk in there, you buy one of their shakes, it's an Herbalife powder mix. Oh. You buy one of their teas, it's an Herbalife powder mix. Yeah. They changed how they do their businesses, right? They, yeah. They, to keep going. It, it happened to, uh, I mean, our own company has had its fair share of ugly things happen. Um, you just, what happens is you adjust, you change your rules, you change your model, mm-hmm. you make sure that you're doing the right thing and you move forward. And I think if I'm, I'm going to make a prediction about LuLaRue okay. because there are some lovely women that yeah, do this and they really, absolutely. they love their product. They love their customers and they just want to make a dollar. Yeah. They just want to help they, they support their families. It. Yeah. I think Mark and Deanne will resign. They'll still own the company. Okay. I think they'll resign. They'll have to bring an outside CEO. Fresh face. Yes. Mm-hmm. Somebody that's not part of the family. Mm-hmm. Somebody that is completely unfamiliar, but is strong right. and that will give the company that will give the people that part of that company confidence and it will give new retailers confidence to join especially now that it's only five hundred dollars yeah how did we go down from five thousand to five hundred dollars <laughs> i don't understand that i bet all. these women who have paid five and ten thousand dollars are like well crap what the frack yeah. what in the world so i believe that they're gonna ha- they will have to react to this now unless that mark seems kind of stubborn you know, he he doesn't seem to want to admit that there was a problem. He says, we didn't have a leggings problem. We didn't right. have a clothes problem. We had a social media problem. And that's not... not well, they're definitely going to have to revamp their designs. That, oh, I think they will. Yes. They're going to have to revamp yeah. their designs. They're going to have to revamp who they're selling to, I think. I've noticed that they're putting out more solid color items. Mm-hmm. And that was one thing that a lot of people would complain about is... We love your we love your leggings. I just want a black pair. Yes, we love your leggings. We love your shirts or whatever. Can I please mm-hmm. have a black one or a blue one or a red one? Yeah. And the answer was no, you couldn't. Yeah. But I am noticing on these albums that different people put up that there's solid colors and they can order solid colors. Okay. So I think that's an adjustment that needed to be made. So I, I'm just telling you that because this highlights so many bad things that the company had, it's almost like a a checklist of things that they need to change. Yeah. And if they want to keep going and want to keep growing, because I mean, you saw that number, it got up to 80,000 plus. Yeah. And then it started shrinking. And now there's only what, like 10 or 20,000 yeah. across the country. Yeah. So I believe we'll get a new CEO soon. Okay. I mean, within six months, I bet anything. Yeah. I bet anything. Now they'll be there to do things. They'll, they're not leaving, mm-hmm. but they'll have a new face to that company. And I hope they do not for, Mark and Diane, but is that their name? Crap. Deanne. Mark and Deanne. Mark and Deanne. Diane is her twin sister. Deanne. <laughs> yeah, Deanne and Diane. That's a whole other story. Um, not for them, but for these women who have invested so much of their time yeah. and their money. And they, like you said, they just want to they want to financially help their families. Yes, and I want them to. I Me want too. everybody yeah. that has put so much effort and is so good at what they do yeah. to make... You Look, know, I wanted nothing more than a good home-based business that I could make a little extra money with. Yeah. I mean, so, it, I mean, yeah. they can do it if they will. Do you know what I'm going to do with all the money that I'm going to get when I find that opportunity? What? I'm going to go to the bank, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go cash that check. Yeah. And I'm going to bring it home, and I'm going to go climb on this balcony. Yeah. And I'm going to say, family, come to the living room. And then I'm going to... Throw the money over the balcony. Throw dollar bills over the balcony. (laughs) And I'm going to say, this is all for you. I did it all for you. All for you. I did it all for you. And then it's going to say, hashtag, thanks, LuLaRoe. Yes. Well, it will not be LuLaRoe, but it will be something else. (laughs) Okay. On a scale of one to 10, how true is that story that she told about that? Zero, Uh, Misty. The answer is zero. (laughs) Zero. That did not happen. It didn't happen. That did not happen. No. She completely made that up. Mm -mm. Uh, This is what I want to know. How did the woman who bought the car, who said, I walked into the dealership and bought a car. Two cars. Two cars. Walked in, bought them. How did they get repossessed if you bought them? I don't think they got repossessed. I think she sold them. She had to sell them. Oh, I was under the impression they got repossessed. Like, she saw the people coming and getting them. And I was like, wait, I thought you bought them. Yeah, my guess, well, yeah, they could have gotten repossessed. I mean, I was under the impression that they got sold, that she just had to start selling everything. Yeah. She's the one that was like, no, I'm not having gastric bypass or gastric (sighs) food. Thank goodness. (laughs) 
they told her she had that balloon. They all probably got some parasite. It's probably not even gastric sleeve. They probably got a worm or a bug in their belly that's eating all their stuff. Yeah. And did I ever tell you what my grandmother told me about that? I'm not sure I want to know. What that is it? <laughs> she, no, she wasn't all right. Um, she said, or she told my dad or somebody that back in the back in the good old days when you would have a tapeworm in your stomach, Mm -hmm. that they would tie you down to a chair and starve you for three days and then put a bowl of food in front of you and the worm would come out of your mouth to eat the food. That's not true. That cannot be true. That's what I heard. That is some high tech right there. Let's Google it. But could you imagine? That's Alabama? Yeah. That's Shannon Alabama? It's like some Beetlejuice stuff. (laughs) Note to self, don't get a tapeworm. (laughs) Note to self, don't get a tapeworm. Do not get a tapeworm. Or I'm going to have to starve you and tie you down to that recliner and put a bowl of your mother's delicious meatballs on that (laughs) table, and that worm's going to come out and eat those meatballs. Hey, are you, can you smell the crock pot going? Yes, I smelled it when I came in. Yes. Is that what that is? No, I'm making that, um... Remember, I, were you, I think you had it. It was that like beef that barbecue, over the, rice? That, the shredded beef. Yes. I'm making that too. <gasps> yes. Ropa vieja. Ro- Ropa vieja. Ropa vieja. Ropa vieja. Ropa vieja. Ropa vieja. Ropa vieja. <laughs> it means old clothes. I do good with it's my like rolling it. though, right? Yes, you do. Ropa. Ropa vieja. 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 Yeah. Ropa vieja. Yes. Did you? Did you? <laughs> Gracias. Very good. Gracias. Very good. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's called it, like the literal translation is old clothes, and I'm I've got it in the crock pot, so it'll be nice and soft by tonight. Old clothes. It's possible that I am not. That's the take. perfect meal for our post Lula Rich episode. <laughs> come back, come oh. back over tonight. I'll feed. Come you. Come back over and have some come old on. clothes with me. Come on, yes. Yeah. I'm also there's anyway, there's other things I can make with it, but mm. it's going to be delicious. Sounds. I liked it over. And us. Nova has a football game tonight. But I may actually not take her in lieu of eating this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why didn't y'all make it to the football game? We were eating no clothes. We were having dinner. Sorry. Yes. Also, tomorrow is the cold front, and I don't want to go today when it's going to be hot. And I'm excited. I hope it cools off. I can't wait. I'm so you know tired. what? We should call Lula Row and find out if they have any jackets we can have. Do y'all have any leggings? <laughs> I'll scrape the mold off, and I'll put them on. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, I got to go check my Lula Row. Inventory. Inventory. Okay. All right, bye. Bye.